What do you think about the um, the similarities between the ECB situation and the Fed situation? Because a lot of market participants would like to see the ECB get a little bit more hawkish, and it seems that inflation isn't giving them any reason to do so. Is the Fed in the same boat? Well, I don't think the Fed is in quite the same boat because we don't have a situation in the U.S. where you have uh, the central bank's actions actually holding yields negative uh, out to the mid part of the curve. And don't forget that the Fed has already raised rates three times uh, and has pledged to do more. So, uh, look, the U.S. economy is in a more advanced stage of its cycle than Europe is, and uh, the monetary tightening cycle is in a more advanced stage as well. So I, I think the comparison is really... Uh, start and stop there. I think that, you know, you're almost in a situation where Europe is where the U.S. was three, four years ago when the, you know, when we had the taper tantrum. Uh, there's no tantrum in Europe right now, but uh, I think they're really polar, really polar apart in terms of uh, where they are in the cycle. So the comparisons are, are really apples and oranges. Mm. Yeah, David, and if we look at where the 10-year Treasury yield is and we look at the U.S. yield curve, is the market very much underestimating inflation risks and also Fed tightening? Well, uh, the market may be underestimating Fed tightening. That, that might be true. But uh, the question becomes, where's the inflation going to come from? Uh, we have an economic expansion uh, that's about to enter year number nine. We have a forehandle on the unemployment rate. Uh, we've had endless chatter about inflation. We've had the most radical monetary experiment, uh, you can argue, since the 1930s. Uh, where's the inflation coming from? I think that what people tend to be missing here is that there are widespread structural factors at play, whether it's demographics, whether it's excessive debt, uh, excess capacity. I mean, you're going to get inflation in the United States when you have an industry capacity utilization rate of 76%. Um, so I still think, actually, in my opinion, uh, that there's more widespread disinflationary pressures in the U.S. economy than there is inflationary pressures. The Fed could be on its own particular mission. Maybe it's, we'll find out in five years when we get the transcripts, what was really on their mind. Uh, hard to believe with wage growth at 2.3%. Uh, and uh, looking at the latest couple of months of core inflation data, to be concerned about, to be concerned about, concerned about inflation right now, I think, is uh, ludicrous. But it could well be mm. that what the Fed's mostly concerned about is the, you know, the financial excesses in parts of the market that have been tantamount to keeping policy too easy for too long. But I don't think this is an inflation story at all. Interesting, because, of course, that is the big question we're asking everyone is where is inflation going to come from? And on that note, I want to ask you about financial conditions and the way that the Fed responds to those. In the past, it has had a tendency to misinterpret those financial conditions. Tim Doy at Oregon has written a lot about this. Is it at risk of doing that again? And what does that mean for equity markets? Well, we all know that, uh, you know, for the better part of the past... 30 years uh, since the Greenspan era that the Fed uh, has focused on the stock market, continues to focus on the stock market as a barometer of economic activity and a, uh, and a signal uh, for the wealth effect. So uh, I think that right now you'd really have to see a monumental uh, correction in the stock market to push the Fed onto the sidelines as far as June is concerned. Like I think you'd have to see at least a 10 percent correction to move the Fed uh, off its course for at least tightening over the near term. So does the Fed focus on financial markets? Absolutely. Every central bank does, and it's no different this time around. But almost every major average is either at or close to an all-time high. So you'd have to see a pretty sizable downturn from here to push them off a June move.